tweezers. I just uh, <coughs> just washed my hair, and I'm sat here in my pajama bottoms and my t-shirt, preparing to fly off to New York tomorrow for a, a really cool documentary I'm shooting with Dario. And I had a coffee and some leftover chili, and I'm feeling inspired to educate you with something a bit fun, something a bit different. <clears throat> so to be rather antisocial, I've positioned my Black Star HD5 combo in um, in the conservatory here, so you get this uber kind of echo. It sounds really cool. <laughs> Sounds sick and may even turn up just a little bit. Yeah, that's a great sound. Um, so let me just give you a couple of ideas, some tips, hints, and tricks for things like warming up and speed and dexterity on the electric guitar, things that I found really helped me as a young monkey lord growing up to grow into the paws that I now have. Hairy and dexterous. And <laughs> I'll give you <laughs> some of the simple things that I learned from some of my early guitar teachers. People like uh, David Kilminster, Sean Baxter, um, just some people that I really owe an awful lot to. Let me start by showing you um, something that you can do that's really cool with pentatonic scales. <laughs> Now that was taken directly from the solo to Sweet Child of Mine from Slash and Guns N' Roses. And it's a really cool thing that he does <clears throat> in a run up a pentatonic scale that you can apply to any pentatonic scale. And it really opened the door for me with a really cool view on economy picking or alternative ways of picking the guitar because now I really love things like hybrid picking and, and I'm trying to learn to alternate pick swiftly Although it is difficult to be dexterous with alternate picking, for me anyway, because I spent so long um, studying under Sean Baxter, learning how to economy pick. But let me show you how I do this particularly awesome little exercise slash lick. And please forgive the hair and the beautiful uh, Marvel pajama bombs. <laughs> so we're just using pentatonic position one in... And whatever tuning this happens to be, I think it's standard. And all I'm doing is starting on the D string at the 12th fret. And I'm going to go down, up on that one note. So this is. Now, since I'm already traveling up, I'm then going to keep going up and pick the 14th fret on the A string. And then I'm going to pull off to the first finger. So the first finger comes up a string to the A string, and you pull off to that. So the sound you get is this. itself was a revolution for me. Revelation for me? A revelation that led to revolution. Because you can move that. You can move it around and do all sorts of different shapes. For example... That kind of thing. So it's a useful, movable picking concept. But let's continue up the scale. So... Then I'm going to do the same thing. So since I'm picking down for that last note, or it's a hammer, um, which would take the place of where a downstroke would be, I bring my third finger to the 14th fret on the D string, and I'm going to go down up, and I'm going to pull off to the 12th fret D, and then pick up on the A string 14. So, so far, the sort of the circle that we've done is this. And that can be repeated and you can move notes within it to make it sound musically different. So obviously different pickups make it sound different. So that's the beginning of the pattern that we're going to use to descend the pentatonic scale. So let's do it slowly and with less game.
I think that was right. Anyway, just an idea, food for thought for you to use and to experiment with. <clears throat> Let me give you something else. On a three note per string scale, for example, um, my favorite, the three octave Aeolian or natural minor scale. I spent all sorts of time practicing different ways of picking and playing this particular scale. And then I came across one of my own that I thought was really useful as an exercise. And all I'm doing is I'm hammering and pulling the entire thing. So you start off with a pick and then I'll play it to you sort of slowly. So I've just picked where I'm changing string, but I'm doing a backward and forward pedal motion to get an interesting pattern within a scale. Neck pickup. Here it is again. So I'll start with a pick, I'll slide, hammer, and pull, and then hammer again. So is the beginning. Then the same with a little finger. Now I'm going to pick down a string so I can chain string with a pick. And what I'm doing is I'm picking, hammering, and then picking. So, so far you've got... And if I tell you what I'm doing with the pick hand, I'm going pick, slide, hammer, pull, hammer, hammer, pull, hammer, pick, hammer, pick, hammer, pull, hammer, hammer, pull, hammer, slide. That pattern is great for dominating all sorts of um, really cool licks and phrases inside three neck string scales. I mean, you could apply it to just a natural major scale. Like that, but I would recommend that you try it inside this three octave minor scale. Here again is the shape. shape of scale, here's the exercise. Sounds cool. It's kind of a funky thing you can do. One more ting for the tings. I did a lick recently which was just a stupid thing. It was called the lick of shock or the lick of surprise and um, it was really just an excerpt from uh, just a cool Ingve thing that he always does. And so um, let me show you something that I was taught by Gus G, or the beginning of what I was taught by Gus G. So this arpeggio is really in sort of two or three chunks. Let me show you the first two in, in, in a detail. So we're going to start at 17, up or down, and you can pull off and then go B string, 13, 14, 15, 16 up to 17, and then pull off again to the first thing you see, get this. And then little finger comes up, so we're accessing the second part of this kind of arpeggiated run. And the, if you imagine the dots, they kind of mirror image now, so we're going to go down, pull off to the 13th fret B string, second finger 14th fret, little finger comes over, pull off to the 13th fret. So you get It's cool, isn't it? I like that. And you can finish it. Like that, but I don't normally bother. That sound, you can take the beginning part. And you can do that anywhere within a four fret pattern because we're using a specific scale on certain intervals that will allow you to do that. So wherever you can travel one, two, three frets back or forward, you can play that initial shape. So I'm just going down, up, up. So for example, if I go back a couple of... Then you get the surprise of... sort of lick of surprise and shock. But don't forget... It's the whole thing is really there. Anyway, that's a cool thing that you can do, but you can apply it to any scale or any sound. So rather than it just being, um, you know, it could be, or it could be, 
Anything really diatonic. Um, if you imagine this is just the top of a, a major or minor arpeggio, then it's that's really what it is, you know. So you could take um, and you could be like down, up, up. And if this was the chord number one, then you could go along chord two, chord three, chord four. change all the keys and modes. Anyway, I hope that was in any way interesting and useful for you. Please tune in, please subscribe, please share this video, please enjoy my hair, cloud on my head, and some on my face, and, um, <laughs> and tune in for more of Chapper's Kitchen tutorials with myself, Rob Chapman, and this beautiful ML2 from Chapman Guitars that I'm currently uh, very much enjoying. I hope you very much enjoyed this lesson. Enjoy practicing. See you guys soon. Chappers, out. <laughs>